Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Public Works for today, Monday, March 9th, 2020. Commissioner Villegas, Garcia, James, and Colosa are present. President James, you do have a quorum. May we start with your introductions, please, starting with Bureau of Street Lighting. Sean Tavasafia and Bureau of Street Lighting. Sherry Crokey, LA Sanitation. Rudy Jimenez, Bureau of Engineering. Good morning, John Olinger, Bureau of Contract Administration. Uh, Nick Lopez, Bureau of Street Services. Good morning, Ted Jordan, Public Works General Counsel. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. President James, we did receive one speaker card under general public comment. We have no commentary under the Neighborhood Council comment section, and we also received a speaker card on item number two, three, and four. Uh, okay, um, thank you, Dr. Campos. Um, we'll close the Neighborhood Council category of commentary. Mr. Sachs, let's go ahead and take care of general public comment. Yes, thank you. Good morning, Arnold Sachs. Uh, let's see, general public. So shout out to the uh, runners in yesterday's marathon. Unfortunately, I didn't get to walk for the uh, uh, Dede Hirsch uh, suicide prevention, but I think I'll set up by the Board of Supervisors tomorrow just to look for donations, um, especially the uh, disabled and the um, handicapped runners it was quite a feat. Did you know that the, the McCourt Foundation is an organizer of that event, the LA Marathon? Why does that name sound so familiar, McCourt? Uh, there was an article in the Santa Monica newspaper, a uh, local newspaper, uh, regarding that. Anyway, um, it was quite an event also at the uh, in Wilmington for the public works with the tree giveaway. It was quite interesting. A lot of good people working, a lot of booths set up, a lot of information available. I told the people uh, in the neighborhood council there was there that they should try and get their members to get a copy of this book, the City of Los Angeles Neighborhood Services. There's quite a few services. There's a whole bunch of things that you could do for rent, rent escrow, a rent, small rental rehabilitation program available, um, RAC, the Rent Adjustment Commission, all kinds of different things. You could find out, call your city councilman and find out if he has his book in their office, and maybe you could pick one up at city council. But the interesting thing at the uh, uh, event was that there was a neighborhood council set up on one side of the the uh, event, and then there was. Uh, Neighborhood empowerment set on the other side of the event. And you would think that they would be somewhat together because Two minutes. they're both supposed to be involved with the neighborhood. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. That'll close general public comment. Um, agenda item number one is a requested... Uh, contract Acceptance Council District 11 Secondary Sewer Renewal Program, Lincoln Boulevard and Rose Avenue, recommending that the board accept the contract. Mr. Olinger. Good morning, John Olinger, Bureau of Contract Administration. I'm here to ask for your acceptance on the Secondary Sewer Renewal Program, SSRP C05 Lincoln Boulevard and Rose Avenue. The work order was SZC13269. The contract number was 130752. The contract was executed by your board on January 3rd, 2018 in the amount of $1,322,995. The construction was completed under MNR Construction Inc. on April 18th, 2019. The project consisted of renewal of approximately 1.29 miles of sewer lines, installation of maintenance holes in difficult to access reaches. The project is bounded by Dewey Street to the north, Sentinel Avenue to the east, Venice Boulevard to the south, and 6th Street to the west. The contractor has complied with the equal employment opportunity and labor compliance requirements of the contract. There were no funds disputed or withheld, therefore no funds are due to the contractor. There are no unresolved property owner's complaints in connection with this project. Were there any questions? Any questions at all from Mr. Olinger on number two? Um, excuse me, number one. Um, I'll make a motion that we adopt agenda item number one, seconded by Commissioners Garcia and Coloza. Any objection? 
Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number one. Any issues sending number one forthwith? Uh, we'll send number one forthwith. Agenda item number four is Council District 6 motion. Bid extension Donald C. Tillman Water Reclamation Plant Equalization and Emergency Power Backup Project segments, um, as well as the DCT Advanced Water Purification Facility Primary Equalization Basin Project, um, Backup Power Project, um, and Screw Pumps Inlet Gates Project. Recommending that the board grant the extension of the bid date from March 11th, which is Wednesday, to March 25th, 2020. That's a two-week extension. And direct the city engineer to advise all prospective bidders of the board's action by addendum. Mr. Sachs on number four. Mr. Sachs waves number four. Mr. Kopp on number four. Good morning. David Kopp, Bureau of Engineering. So the, the scope of this work is to... Uh, implement four segments, uh, two critical components of the plant's uh, uh, abilities to reclaim wastewater, uh, including the replacement of 17 gates that allow for the plant to safely isolate uh, processes within the facility, as well as upgrade the plant's backup, backup power capability uh, to provide about six megawatts of emergency power generation and also provide equalization storage. And this is necessary so that the plant does not flood in times where the influent needs to be adequately stored. And this is a prerequisite for the planned full build out of the advanced water purification uh, facility in years to come. City engineers estimate is over 71 million. Uh, speaking to the uh, complex nature and magnitude of the project and the board already approved pre-qualifying uh, these design build entities in October of this year. We went through the RFQ process and have shortlisted uh, three bidders uh, during that time. And the, the reason we were requesting uh, a bid date extension is primarily due to the magnitude of questions that we received and therefore need time to adequately respond and allowed the potential bidders uh, adequate time to, re to reflect the city's responses to those questions in their bid. And so the, the original bid date was the 11th of this week. Uh, we plan to address all questions by tomorrow, which therefore allow for the two week time frame that we're requesting herein. And this speaks to the, the complexity of the project. Therefore, there were a lot of questions. Um, a lot of these segments of the scope uh, need to be coordinated and therefore a design build uh, project delivery method was selected to be the best. And it is a schedule driven uh, decision to do that. Uh, in in, other, in uh, the scenario of design bid build, we would have to do these four segments in, in a series. Uh, allowing us to do this through design build will allow us the, a single entity to integrate all of, all of the scope into one contract and better coordinate the work. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Any questions at all for David Cobb? Um, I don't have any questions. I'll make a motion that we adopt agenda item number four. Seconded by Commissioner Garcia and Commissioner Villegas. Um, any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number four. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Cobb. Thank you for the explanation. Um, any issue sending number four forthwith? We'll send number four forthwith. Agenda item number two is um, a request for a contract acceptance, contract administration and engineering in Council District 11. Contract acceptance for the Hyperion treatment plant, the secondary clarifiers upgrade project, recommending that the board accept the contract and secondly assess 4DC incorporated with a penalty in the amount of $5,850 for the unauthorized subcontractor substitution of one small business enterprise and two other business enterprise uh, subcontractors. Mr. Sachs on number two. Thank you again, Arnold Sachs. Um, so there's a couple things. Um, does the city have, there's clarifiers, okay, supposedly. Uh, does the city use uh, mudifiers, you know, things that make things muddier? Uh, it seems like the government always is trying to make things dirtier instead of clarifying itself. And then a um, question about the Hyperion treatment plant. What is its relationship to the Donald C. Tillman water reclamation plant. Uh, I know there's a lot of uh, facilities along that portion of, uh, of Playa Vista, uh, the road that goes by the bay, the, uh, in, uh, 
on the west side of El Segundo. Um, and I also understand that the um, city is going to stop using the uh, power plant there, the, the uh, DWP plant. Is that one of the reasons why the Donald C. Tillman plant is going to need to have you electricity uh, for the operations? It's, it's just one of those things that, you know, I travel around, I see a lot of different things, I ask a lot of different questions, I like to be involved in asking questions. I'm looking, thinking to get involved in sitting on maybe a city council seat. We'll see how that plays out. And maybe there's a runoff. But um, this qu clarifiers and modifiers, that'd be an interesting uh, discussion for a debate. Maybe we'll see, well the city council is off this week. All that heavy lifting from the elections. So we'll see when they come back if they can clarify something about that. Although there are some council meetings today, it should be interesting. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sachs. Um, on agenda item number two, Sophie Tang. Good morning, Sophie Tsung with the Bureau of Contract Administration. Um, BCA is recommending a penalty of $5,850 I'm sorry, $5,850 to Ford EC for three unauthorized subcontractor substitution. Uh, the first subcontractor is Mets MMC. Uh, they were approved for a, as an additional subcontractor in the amount of $1,200. Um, in accordance, uh, OCC verified that the subcontractor performed $29,601.44 of work. Uh, staff did verify that there was no change order and that this is well above the allowed one half percent um, what is allowed by the public contract code. So that ends up being 10% of the approved amount, which in this for this subcontractor is $1,200. Uh, the second subcontractor in this case is Peterson Hydraulics. Again, they are approved as a additional subcontractor in the amount of $2,100. Um, but they, the OCC verified that the subcontractor performed $278,022.29, well above uh, the public contract code allowance of half a percent. Um, there was also no change order, so that was another 10% of the approved amount. For them, that would be $2,100. Uh, the thir third contractor is Lucan Certified Welding. They were approved as an additional subcontractor in the amount of $25,500. Um, they verified that the subcontractor ended up performing $123,725 thousand uh, dollars there was no change order and again this was not in accordance with the public um, contract code which only allows for half of one percent uh, the total of that of the three subcontractor does end up being five thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars thank you thank you any questions at all uh, we'll start with Commissioner Villegas thank you Mr. James uh, just a clarifying question um, Ford EC knows about the? Yes, um, and they decided not to show up today. Okay, what was their response? Do they have any? Um, in, uh, not, that I, not that I'm aware of. No additional information uh, in terms of um, why these, um, I guess like accounting errors or either um, on their part or why you know they went over or didn't use some subcontractors? No, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anything further? And Dr. Campos, just to confirm for the oral record, we don't have um, a speaker card uh, from anybody on this item other than Mr. Sachs, correct? That is correct. Only okay. Mr. Sachs. Um, then I'll make a motion that we adopt agenda item number two. Seconded by Commissioner Villegas. Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number two. Any issue sending number two forthwith? We will send number two forthwith. Uh, agenda item number three, Dr. Campos, that's our only remaining item other than our meeting minutes, uh, correct? That is correct. Okay, well our meeting minutes are from Monday, March 2nd, 2020. Is there a second to my motion that we approve the meeting minutes from that date? Uh, by um, uh, Commissioner Davis, any objection? Without objection, 
that'll be the order on agenda or on our meeting minutes. Agenda item number three. Department of Transportation, Engineering, and Contract Administration. Council districts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 14. We're only missing 13 and 15 and 12. Contract Award, International Line Builders Incorporated Vision Zero Phase 2D Project, recommending that the board find Select Electric Incorporated, the first low bidder, to be non-responsive as discussed in the report. Secondly, find KDC Incorporated doing business as Dine Electric, the apparent third low bidder that became the second low bidder after the local business preference was applied, to be non-responsive as discussed in the report. Third, declare International Line Builders Incorporated International, the apparent second low bidder that became the third low bidder after the LBP was applied, that's the local business preference, to be the lowest responsive, responsible bidder and award international a contract for the Vision Zero Phase 2D project for $8,553,948 and authorize myself or two members of the board to execute the contract after approval as to form has been obtained from the city attorney. Um, we have Mr. Driscoll and Ms. McGlinch is here from Contract Administration. Mr. Sachs, you have a card in on number three. Right. Nope, go ahead, sir. You're halfway up. Yes, thank you again, Arnold Sachs. So this is one of these items, a um, couple different things. Vision Zero, which has been discussed and rehashed. I've lost his mic. Yeah, I think when you m touched it, you may have flipped it off. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Uh, he should get a, a bonus for that. Um, work above and beyond the call of duty. Um, but the other part of this that's important that I see is this local business preference, shouldn't it be applied when the contracts go out? That's the whole idea of having a local business preference. Um, that way you know that local businesses are somewhat involved in the business of doing the work around the city. I mean, the other item was a substitution for one small business for another small business to, to make these contract award or make these bids and and not really have a local business preference part of the bid I mean you have lists of contractors that are already pre-approved and if they're pre-approved you would hope that or you would think and you as a member of the public you would think that well they've met all the requirements which means one of the requirements would be that it is a local business preference and then you have to go come in front of here and you hear that the board has to decide or somebody has to decide for the board that nope, these businesses were awarded contracts and then awarded, uh, allowed to bid on contracts and Two then minutes. a local business preference was applied. Doesn't make sense. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, let's have um, Mr. Driscoll. You'll let us know what's going on and then we'll see what's, uh, what we have from contract administration. Good morning, Adam Driscoll with LADOT, and I am here today to recommend that the board, uh, among a few other things, uh, declare International Line Builders the lowest responsive responsible bidder and to award them the Vision Zero Phase 2D contract in the amount of $8,553,948. Um, just a quick background on this project, this, this contract includes traffic signal improvements at 50 different intersections throughout the city. 32 of these 50 intersections are specifically part of the Vision Zero program. These locations have been identified based on their crash histories and based on our data-driven approach to finding out you know, which locations in the city would most, ben the safety would most, most benefit from some type of traffic signal improvement. So of these 32, nine are brand new signals that come with uh, brand new ADA compliant access ramps. The other 23 are our more standard uh, left turn improvements Again, all of which have been identified based on our you know, data-driven approach and crash histories. Um, 
17 of these 50 intersections are part of the West Side Fast Forward Initiative, otherwise known as the West Side Mobility Project. Um, this is a project that we department undertook in response to a motion by Councilman Mike Bonin last April. He put forth this motion, identified the funding sources for us to use, and we jumped on it. And this is just the first part of that project. There will, there will be more work on it to come. But 17 of the locations in this um, are part of that, that project, that initiative. And then there's one <coughs> intersection at Gilmore and Winnetka, which is sort of just an orphaned intersection that, didn't, that needed a project to go into. That is installing a new traffic control device and crosswalk at, to support this, this new bike lane project that went in on Winnetka and just to support access to the LA River bike connectivity between the LA River bike path and this new bike path on Winnetka. Um, so that's the scope of you know, the 50 intersections that are included in this contract. I also wanted to take a minute to address um, concerns about some of our projects regarding parking loss. Um, I know that's kind of becoming an issue, especially with these more corridor-wide improvements where we install bike lanes or edge lines and those projects can result in some parking loss. This project is all traffic signal improvements, but there is parking loss and we've identified that as you can see on the handouts that I've sent you guys or have had distributed to you. Um, at a normal left turn improvement, there's not much room for parking loss. The signal's already there, the appropriate red curb and visibility is already there, there's not much parking loss. At the nine locations where there's new signals going in, um, there's new crosswalks, different rules for visibility, so there is a, a higher likelihood that there's parking loss. Um, and you'll see three of the nine new intersections we're pro proposing in this project are in CD8, and those represent 21 parking spots lost in CD8. I've communicated that with our <coughs> the folks in our department who handle council outreach. We have um, you know staff on hand who sort of acts as a liaison between the department and the council offices. They've relayed this information to the council offices, and if the, office, if the council office responds with um, some with a desire to do some more public outreach or something more robust as far as outreach on the parking lots, we're going to proceed and, and go forward with that. Um, but as far as as far as that, that was everything I prepared to say. Thank you, um, Mr. Driscoll. We'll start with Commissioner Coloza. Um, thank you, President James. I just wanted to um, thank you for doing this parking analysis. Um, and I really appreciated the briefing you and the DOT team gave me last week. I know that you know one of the uh, main goals of Vision Zero is to really um, make improvements to the community, make improvements to any areas where there might be traffic blockages or things that we can continue to improve, but sometimes there are impacts, um, whether you know it was planned or unplanned. Um, specifically around parking lots, it does uh, make a difference when we do that outreach, and I know that's typically something that we may not necessarily do for these like really minor changes, but just really thank you guys for flagging that up the chain to the council office and really leaving it in their hands to um, know whether or not to talk to their constituents. And so just uh, wanted to thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Commissioner Closa, as well. Ms. McGlinchey. Um, could you explain the, uh, the decision that was made um, from OCC regarding uh, moving from the, uh, the first, the perceived first low bidder to the uh, perceived second low bidder? based on the business inclusion program. I know they have a, uh, a representative here and uh, they'll respond. Um, there's, it's all set forth in the board report, but the oral record needs to include it. We may have some questions. Certainly, Linda McGlinchey, Bureau of Contract Administration. Uh, for this project, the first low bidder, Select Electric, uh, we found to be non-responsive uh, due to their mandatory subcontracting minimum pledge. This project had an MSM of 25%. Based on the subcontractors listed in their bid proposal documents, they pledged 18.5%. Staff informed the contractor. The contractor uh, responded by saying that they had a supplier 
that they included as part of their business inclusion program as being selected, but they failed to list them in their bid proposal documents. The bid proposal documents are very clear in that they, uh, it states on the pages, and it's bolded, that failure to list subcontractors and subcontracting amounts on pages 1-6 through 1-8 with the bid sufficient to meet or exceed the MSM may cause the bid to be rejected by the board as non-responsive. Uh, specifically, the reason why it says may is there is a court case that has been used from time to time that allows the board discretion. Historically, the What's board the name of that case again? Galani. Sorry, Ga yeah, Galani. We've, we've worked with the Galani case a lot. I was, I was thinking it was Valani with a V, but Galani, okay. <laughs> The, um, historically, the board has only invoked Galati in times where that deviation was less than one half of one percent. So, for instance, had select had a pledge greater than 24.5 percent out of the 25 percent, we, we very well may have recommended Galati, but in this case, there, it, there's a bit, what, about a 7% seven, seven uh, de deviation. So based on that, we are recommending that they be found non-responsive. Um, the second low bidder was uh, after the local business preference program was applied was KDC, or actually, I'm sorry, yes, was KDC. However, they also made an error with regards to MSM, and so we're recommending that they be found non-responsive. We inform them they, they uh, did not respond with regards to that. Therefore, after the local business preference is applied, international line builders uh, who became the third low bidder was responsive in all aspects. They, uh, they passed their BIP, they met the MSM, and uh, so therefore we are recommending that International be, uh, be deemed the responsive, lowest responsive responsible bidder and awarded the contract. Okay. Um. Uh, thank you. Any questions for Ms. McGlinchey before we move to the representative from Select Electric? Thank you, Ms. McGlinchey. We know you won't go far. We'll, we may have some questions depending on what they say. I've got Stan Clark. Mr. Clark, I'm not sure if you've appeared before us before. Uh, yes, I have. Okay. I've uh, been in front of you. I've won. I've lost. I've, <laughs> I've been on committees for DBE. Well, <laughs> won awards. So, yeah, thank you for recognizing me. Welcome back. I apologize for that. We do see a lot of folks. Okay. No, but I understand. I only wanted to confirm one thing with you, that um, we don't put a time limit on real parties and interest. Um, however, we, um, if you start to repeat yourself, then we'll step in and, in the interest okay. of everybody else's time. Go ahead. I'm going to be really quick. Uh, I think it's in the best interest of the city of Los Angeles and the taxpayers to award a job to select electric. We are going to execute the contract and did pledge a 29% goal exceeding the goal. Uh, if you read the board report, they're not denying that. They are denying that we missed it on the bid form. We, we had our commitment. We... we we did everything we could do. It was a clerical error. So it does say the board may reconsider. And for us having a 29% goal and being $715,304 lower and meeting the goal, in the best interest of the city of Los Angeles is to award the job to select electric. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. McGlinchey? Oh, I was looking over here. Anyways, uh, so the we do have staff response in the in the board report. Would you um, uh, uh, reiterate the, the staff's response uh, to the um, the claim made by Select Electric? So, it, as stated, uh, they did list a supplier in their business inclusion program summary sheet or BIP summary sheet as having been selected, but they did not list them in their bid proposal documents. 
and as a matter of clarity for the MSM program, they must be listed in the bid proposal documents. If a subcontractor is not listed in the bid proposal documents, we cannot hold them to any pledged utilization. So while, the, while in their BIP outreach summary sheet, they listed this, this supplier, since they're not in the bid proposal documents, they could just as easily substitute them out. There's um, no, you know, there's no doubt that they have to purchase supplies, but with that said, there's no requirement that they list a supplier for anything other, other than if they choose, we give contractors the option of listing suppliers to meet the MSM. In this case, they did not list the supplier, which would be then a committed pledge to that company. So is that another way of saying that by avoiding that, they could somehow create an advantage to themselves one way or another? Yes. Yes, because they, they can then shop for other pricing closer to when they need it and th therefore get a lower, a lower cost in terms of those supplies. And there's no, the city doesn't have the uh, knowledge of the relationship that's occurring subsequent to the bid being submitted? Correct. Um, any other, uh, Commissioner Coloza? Uh, thank you, President James. Uh, I just had a quick question. Does, um, are you aware if, uh, Select has a history of, um, doing this in past bids, or is this something that just happened this time? That I couldn't tell you. I can tell you Select has certainly bid other projects and won them, but, uh, whether or not they've done that, you don't, you know, listing or committing to use of suppliers, I could not tell you. Okay. Um, do they have existing projects right now? Uh, sorry, I'm asking you a, a very <laughs> broad question, um, but I see. I'm sorry, would you repeat the question, Commissioner Gold? Oh, I just, uh, uh, let me just repeat the question, sir. Um, I just asked if there are what existing projects, if any select had right now, just okay. I'm curious which I don't know off the top of my head, but I would certainly welcome their response. Okay. Uh, we have a large DOT project current. Um, it's an ITS project with LADOT that's just wrapping up. We have three BSL jobs currently going and uh, should probably deliver 50 or $60 million of contracts under select. It was never a problem. And I can also say that I still disagree on the one fact is that we pledged the 29% because we showed the commitment and we uploaded that on balance. So they're saying it goes with what's in the bid documents. I'm saying if you execute the contract, we're going to go up to 29% with regard to it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, any more questions from Ms. McGlinchey? Thank you, ma'am. Oh, do you have them? Okay. Uh, Mr. Jordan, uh, recognizing the introduction of the Galani case into the discussion, we've dealt with that on occasion. Um, we've got, what, what concerns me here is the potential, as Ms. McGlinchey stated, uh, for a potential advantage here based on the process that, uh, that Selectric, Electric went, went through, recognizing um, uh, what their, um, their representative, uh, Mr. Clark, has said. Um, Mr. Jordan, your, your thought on what, what our discretion is and, uh, and your thought on the recommendation of the Bureau given the explanation from Ms. McGlinchey. Well, <clears throat> yes. Well, uh, um, I'm familiar with the case. I concur with the Bureau's recommendation in this case where in, in other cases the, when, when the staff has uh, recommended that there is no competitive advantage that could be gained when a bidder has a uh, clerical error or some other type of uh, uh, deficiency in their bid, um, the, the, the board has chosen to exercise the discretion that that case affords. Here, however, the staff is, their recommendation is that, th that this type of error in, in this magnitude 
it can create a situation where a, a bidder could get a competitive advantage. So we typically look at the responsiveness of the bid based on what was in that bid envelope that we opened, not with what came in after the bids have been opened and everybody knew what the bids are. Uh, in that type of situation, theoretically, a contractor could, could have held back that um, uploading the information with their BIP and, and thereby there would have been no doubt that they would be non-responsive. So we, we typically look at the responsiveness based on what was in that bid envelope, not with what is coming in later um, because that also gives a, a bidder an opportunity to choose to submit that or not and thereby control whether their bid is responsive. The bottom and line is I concur with the staff's recommendation. Right, but, but that, to that last point that you made, if the board were to go against the Bureau's recommendation and go ahead and, and pick, in this instance, the dollar amount lower bid, yes. even with this mistake, um, as described by the contract administration, I, my concern, again, is that we open up not only about this potential advantage, but then we open up arguments for future contractors based on this case. Uh, correct, correct. This goes beyond what staff has historically done in terms of making the recommendation to, to waive an informality or not. Um, plus, I do concur with the, with the Bureau's indication that while I'm sure the contractor here absolutely intends to use the firm that they listed, there's no indication that they've they're trying to gain, gain an advantage here. Just from a technical standpoint, the, our ability to hold a contractor to a bid-listed subcontractor or a bid-listed supplier is based on whether that was listed in their bid, you know, bid-listed. And so here that really wouldn't be available to us. Uh, I'm not saying that there's an intent for them to try to bid shop the, what the supplier is providing. It, it's just sort of a hole in our ability to, you know, enforce something, you know, possibly years from now. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? Um, then I'm going to make a motion that we adopt agenda item number four as recommended by contract administration. Seconded by Commissioner Davis. Uh, any objection? With that objection, that will be the order. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. McGlinchey. Uh, any issue sending number four forthwith? We'll send number four forthwith. Dr. Campbell, have we cleared the desk? Yes, you have. Okay, then we are adjourned. There is no bureau heads meeting today, so, uh, so we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.